Ari, Jordi Prepper here. Hope you're all doing well. Let's have a look at some things happening around this kind of spherical planet that we're on. Firstly, we're looking at another bridge collision. This was a barge. The collision closed the highway over an Arkansas river. After the Francis Scott Key Bridge comes yet another collision with a large boat and a bridge. The incident unfolded as a large barge collided with a bridge spanning the Arkansas River in Oklahoma. The collision occurred near the Kerlock and Dam, causing immediate concern and prompting action from the authorities. The Oklahoma State Patrol swiftly responded to the situation by closing South US Highway 59, which is a major route, again another major route over a river. Traffic was diverted away from the area as troopers assessed the damage and managed the situation. So obviously they're going to be on a heightened alert around bridges in America right now. Despite the severity of the collision, there were no reported injuries, either on the highway or the barge itself. This fortunate outcome did ease concerns about potential human casualties and allowed authorities to focus on resolving the aftermath of the incident. Following the collision, engineers from Oklahoma Department of Transportation inspected the bridge for structural integrity. After ensuring its safety, the highway was reopened, restoring normal traffic flow in the area. However, the cause of the collision remains under investigation, leaving questions unanswered about what led to this unexpected event. I think what we're seeing is that it's not unexpected. You know, once could be put down to an accident, twice or more is a pattern. And you can see here the damage to the barge, quite substantial. You know, it was just crumpled at the front there. Obviously, this is an area where goods come in and out, where barges operate. Again, probably not as major as what, hap what happened in the other location. Obviously, maybe not as big a port as that, but still goods and trade going through this area, large vessels. This collision involved a different type of boat. The supports of this bridge do appear to be of a similar strength to the Baltimore Bridge, although in a different configuration. The barge that hit it simply didn't have the mass to take it out. However, in the video embedded in the article, if you guys take a look at that, and if you listen to the female eyewitness, she does state that it was traveling very fast when it hit the bridge, which does sound unusual. So let me know in the comments what you think about these bridge collisions. Doesn't it seem a bit too much like the scene in Leave the World Behind with the oil tanker? Or are we simply seeing the deterioration of Western systems? Or perhaps there's just a natural reason for it, such as events happening on the sun, which would explain it. So Russia's uh, Federal Security Service, FSB, has announced the dismantling of a suspected terrorist cell in southern Russia operating in the province of Dagestan. The group allegedly provided weapons and financial support to the assailants responsible for the deadly attack on Moscow's Crocus City Hall. On Easter Sunday, FSB detained four individuals believed to be part of the terrorist cell. The agency claimed that one suspect confessed to personally delivering weapons to the attackers in Moscow. A video released by the FSB showed one of the suspects admitted to planning an attack in the city of Kaspiesk, Dagestan, though it's unclear if this confession came from the same individual. The detained suspects are reported to be foreign nationals, although their specific nationality remains undisclosed. Notably, the attackers behind the Moscow Consul Hall assault, apprehended shortly after the incident, were citizens of Tajikistan, emphasising the transnational nature of the terrorist network. The recent arrests add to the ongoing probe into the March 22nd attack, where gunmen stormed the concert hall, resulting in 144 fatalities. While an affiliate of the Islamic State claimed responsibility, President Putin suggested potential involvement by Ukraine and the West. Obviously, these allegations are refuted by Kiev and uh, USA. The FSB's actions do underscore Russia's determination to combat terrorism, though, amid heightened security concerns. So onto the Middle East now, and an, an alleged Israeli attack on an Iranian ambassador's residence in Damascus has left six people dead, including a prominent Iranian commander. So Israel definitely up in the game against Iran, and they're definitely targeting cells, which they believe are linked to Iran. Iranian state media confirmed the death of 
a commander of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Quds force in Lebanon in the Israeli strike. This is again another escalation in tensions. The strike, the most significant against an Iranian target since the Gaza conflict, has raised concerns about a direct confrontation between Iran and Israel. The Iranian ambassador's residence, which is part of the embassy there, was severely damaged. While Iran blames Israel for the attack, Syria's foreign minister emphasised that it wouldn't affect the strong ties between Iran and Syria. The strike adds a series of recent escalations in the region, raising fears of broader conflict. Yeah, you know, I think we're just going to see something happen eventually. You know, this is just all going to escalate into something really big. So you guys need to prep, prep, prep. Next, we're going to look at Iran and some possible weapon systems that they're going to deploy and what they currently have and going to introduce. So Iran's drone technology in recent months and years has really gathered pace. They attribute this to advancements by knowledge-based companies working with government agencies like the Ministry of Defense and the IRGC. The ARGC Aerospace Force introduced the Gaza drone, which you can see here, which they say is a game changer. And it has the longest range among Iranian made drones, elevating Iran's capabilities in surveillance and combat. It's got a 21 meter wingspan, 35 hour flight capability, and a payload of up to 500 kilograms. The Gaza drone surpasses its predecessors like the Shahed 129. I mean, these. Types of drones here look very similar to Western drones and they're obviously going to share certain design aspects just simply because of the aspect of what it does. They're saying it's turboprop engine, an innovative bond deployment system, enable precision strikes and extended flight durations, enhancing its effectiveness in various missions. And we've seen the precision of other Iranian missiles. It would just translate that any system which they do put on a drone would be very precise. And they're saying that it's equipped with cutting edge electro optical surveillance and potentially SAR imaging radar. The Gaza drone gives comprehensive reconnaissance capabilities. It's got a range of 2000 kilometers. So they're effectively going to use this in civilian and military scenarios. And just to stay with Iran, because, you know, they're going to play a major part in upcoming conflicts and they're taking very bold steps and they've got massive deep underground facilities just chock full of weaponry and missiles etc conventional and possibly unconventional weapons you know they're taking these bold steps and they're enhancing their, in their security along its borders they're saying that they're deploying cutting edge technologies state-of-the-art equipment unveiling a multifaceted approach that goes beyond physical barriers. I mean, they've got the terrain. That country is just would be a nightmare to invade uh, simply because of its geography. So they've already got the defensive geographical positions, you know, to defend their country. So, you know, they're obviously looking at other ways that they can add to this. And their strategies include the deployment of advanced surveillance cameras, unmanned aerial vehicles, Helicopters, micro drones to bolster border surveillance. Iran will be enhancing the training and equipment of border guards to ensure robust frontier defense. And the ties between them and Russia have been highlighted. A defense minister here showcased Iran's missile capabilities, including advanced missiles like the Kyber class, emphasizing Iran's position as a global missile power. And it was stated that Iran's commitment to peaceful resolutions of conflicts is its priority, though. And they do emphasize diplomacy before resorting to military action. But they do hold a firm stance against global terrorism against them. A dedication to safeguarding national interests. Iran continues to fortify its defenses on multiple fronts. So we've seen what some of the Middle Eastern countries are possibly going to deploy and are deploying. And now we're looking at the US Army has deployed its latest defense system to the front lines in Iraq. This is obviously predominantly to field test it, but the Directed Energy Maneuver Short Range Air Defense System is a cutting edge system utilizing high powered lasers to take down enemy drones, rockets, and artillery. 
developed by RTX. It combines a 50 kilowatt laser weapon with the armored chassis of a striker infantry combat vehicle. With advanced radar and targeting systems, it offers unparalleled precision, apparently. With the ability to engage drones and intercept enemy artillery shells in midair, the Dem Shorad gives a multifaceted protection for the US forces deploying it. It has unlimited shots and lightning fast response make it a game changer in modern warfare. I mean, it's only going to be as effective as long as you have power. And, you know, how how hardened is it against EMP, for example? Because, I mean, somebody could just possibly make a, a crude EMP device with, you know, a microwave, components from a microwave can make a, a very crude EM, EMP system. But there's a general that emphasized the importance of field testing the system in combat scenarios. The first laser armored strikers are hitting the ground in Iraq. The army's going to obviously assess their effectiveness against the growing threat of drone swarms. So like I've said in previous videos, you know, the, the scenarios that people are facing in war and the way that war's conducted is changing. And, you know, these current conflicts are given people on both sides as the, you know, people are put into sides in wars. So one side's against the other. They're both at the minute in the Middle East and elsewhere have got the opportunity to develop systems and test systems in a live war environment. So, you know, both sides are taking advantage of it, really. And, you know, I mean, to the detriment of human life, which of course isn't very good, but, um, you know, they're getting to test these things. And now, before war is officially declared, this all just escalates the situation as well, which is what we're preparing for, basically. So, you know, guys, just keep prepped. Let me know in the comment section what you think about all this, which has been covered, especially with the bridge attacks. You know, I mean, this latest bridge attack, even if you were to think about the probability of these things happening, the fact that two events have occurred so close to each other definitely seems suspect to me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Be safe, be prepared, and I'll see you in the next video.